month. Joining us at Post 9 is Alger Capital Portfolio Manager, Anchor Crawford. It's good to have you back. Welcome. Good to be here. And so NVIDIA's second biggest weight in your capital appreciation fund behind Microsoft. After, after even just a week like this, what do you do? Do you leave that alone? Do you trim some? I think when you're so early on in a paradigm shift in a compute cycle um, and you own the company that's the dominant compute platform, you leave it alone for now. May it pause and rest for a few months? Sure. It's been known to do that. It's done that many times before. But as long as the numbers keep going up, the multiple will keep going up. And you say we're so early on. How do you, how do you determine where we are in all of this? It's really hard, but one can... Look, the, the, the TAM and the opportunity for AI, for Gen AI, for a, um, a time of parallel compute is, it's just starting. And the opportunity, I mean, Jensen has described it as a trillion dollar installed base plus another trillion dollar of additional TAM in the market. So it's a very large TAM. I think it's hard for us to even imagine how big the TAM is, but it is very large. One of the things that stood out in the print last week is their adjusted operating margin close to 70 yeah. percent and a lot of conjecture about how, how that can stand, right? How long that can exist before another company tries to come in with some product maybe almost as good and chip away at it. Yes. Yeah, so I think one of the things that I, is underappreciated is that a semiconductors have spent a decade, almost one and a half decades consolidating. And they've consolidated because it's really hard to do what they do. They have very, very deep moats. Um, secondly, if you look at NVIDIA and the pace at which they're innovating, it is unprecedented. We used to be on a kind of a two to four year cycle. At Intel had a TikTok cycle. Every two years they had a new chip, um, a new architecture every four. NVIDIA has accelerated that to one. That's, that is incredible. So if they can stay on this innovation curve, it's going, going to be very hard for the rest of the market to catch them. Semiconductor giant NVIDIA shows no signs of slowing down, and on the heels of strong quarter one earnings and guidance, shares continue to hit new all-time highs. In fact, the stock continues to outpace even the most bullish of price targets set by Wall Street analysts. And NVIDIA plans to stay on top. According to recent reports, NVIDIA is planning to adopt a new form of advanced packaging that will help reduce its reliance on COAS, which is a supply constraint for NVIDIA's AI chips. In today's video, we're going to cover NVIDIA's new plans to solve this critical supply chain issue. But first, if you want to keep up with NVIDIA's latest updates and keep up with the stock market's latest news, you can follow our Twitter account. We post multiple times daily about the biggest changes and catalysts in the market, so click the follow button if you don't want to miss the newest market updates. Now, back to today's video. I, I'm looking at at least numbers here in terms of the weighting of sort of the biggest companies. Microsoft, NVIDIA, Amazon, Meta, and Apple is an alphabet. Is, you know comes close to 50% of your fund. Um, you're comfortable with that, and if so, why? Yeah, so we are in a paradigm right now where the large are actually going to take more mind share of the market. And in part because the investment that needs to be made needs to be made either by the government or it needs to be made by, you know, companies that have huge amounts of free cash flow and they can afford to actually invest in, in all these. You look at what Microsoft's going to spend in CapEx, $50 billion. Um, Google, 30, 40 billion. My, uh, Meta, 40 billion dollars. These are big numbers. The numbers are, are extraordinary. So you're in the view that essentially the biggest will continue to get bigger in part because of the advance of generative AI. They're the only ones who can actually fund it. That's right. And so they become the platforms upon which it is built. But how do you measure that return on investment? So right now, I mean, the, we, we only have shreds of information on what is the ROI. If you talk to providers like uh, Llama, um, what they're saying is, effectively, for every dollar you spend on, on a GPU, your return can be anywhere from 4 to $7. And that's something Jensen and his team had said on the earnings call. We're seeing paybacks of 12 to 18 months um, for a Gen AI data center. So the payback is there. According to Taiwan's economy news daily, NVIDIA is interested in relying on panel-level fan-out packaging, commonly known as FOPLP, for the Blackwell chips. 
A shortage in the packaging end of the semiconductor supply chain has been an analyst worry for years, and analysts have been pressing NVIDIA and its longtime partner TSMC on the matter since 2022. Industry insiders see FOPLP as a viable alternative to CoWise due to TSMC's limited CoWise capacity and the rising demand for AI chips driven by generative AI applications. In fact, a senior executive from China Wafer Level CSP stated that FOPLP could reduce costs and enhance capacity despite having weaker technical specifications than CoWAS due to a more extensive process size, according to the DigiTimes. This is incredible news for NVIDIA, as the company will be able to save money, boost its capacity, and get over an issue that it's been struggling with for a while, and that's TSMC's ability to supply it with the packaging it needs. NVIDIA investors might already know that TSMC is just barely meeting the current demand for this packaging method, never mind future demand, which is why the company announced plans to more than double CoWare's capacity by the end of 2024 last year. But as it turns out, just doubling capacity once won't be enough, and the world's largest contract maker of chips is going to have to keep scaling up at a rapid pace. In late May this year, TSMC announced plans to expand CoWAS capacity at a compound annual growth rate of over 60% till at least 2026. As a result, TSMC's CoWAS capacity will more than quadruple from 2023 levels by the end of that period. So, it's very unlikely that NVIDIA will completely abandon its main supplier, as TSMC is doing everything it can to increase its capacity, but NVIDIA's openness to other options shows that the company knows it needs to diversify its supply chain in order to meet up with the explosive AI demand. In fact, the global AI market is expected to expand at a compound annual growth rate of 37% from 2023 to 2030, according to Markets and Markets, and NVIDIA could be the simplest way to profit from that secular boom. That is why we're going to walk you through reasons why we think NVIDIA stock is still a buy currently. Hello everyone, and welcome back to Investocracy. NVIDIA dominates the AI chip market, and this has helped earnings to climb in the triple digits in recent years. AI may be the hottest tech right now, and this could continue. After all, analysts say the AI market could be worth more than $1 trillion by the end of the decade. So it's no surprise that NVIDIA shares have skyrocketed, advancing 600% over the past three years. This momentum helped push NVIDIA shares to nearly $1,000 in recent times, and they actually surpassed that level after the company announced another blowout quarter, along with a move many investors have been hoping for, a stock split. This will significantly lower the price of each NVIDIA share. But the big question is, should investors buy the stock right now? Or wait until they can get shares at the lower price after the split? Let's find out. But first, if you made it this far into the video, thank you. These videos take a lot of effort and time to make, so if you enjoyed them, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. This goes a long way in helping us grow. That said, back to the video. The, the low PE, and again, I think, you know, sub 40, if that's still where we are, is, is pretty good for the, the, what this company is up to, is often cited as a reason why NVIDIA can still go on a strong run from here. Um, do you think that's likely to be the case? What do you think about the valuation? Yeah, I think it's entirely fair. I mean, 40 is a big number. The market trades for 20, so it's double that. But it does have this locked-in growth rate from all the companies that want to invest in generative AI. And so its broad path is still pretty strong. And against that metric, it looks pretty good. I'd also note that the highest Intel ever got in the 1990s was number three in the S&P. And we're now talking about NVIDIA perhaps getting to number two. So it is interesting that chip companies do kind of have a little bit of a cap as to where they can end up in market cap. But given that NVIDIA has got a I think a much stronger story than Intel in the 1990s. I do think it can keep working from here. Hmm. Uh, Sean, turning to you, what are your thoughts on it? Uh, sure. So just to step back a little bit and put this in historical context, there's always the element that we should be wary when we see very high price to earnings ratios. Um, if we look back through the historical data, what we find is that stocks with high prices relative to earnings generally struggle to generate enough earnings to repay those high valuations. Now, this is a broad feature rather than something that applies on every individual basis, but it should kind of set your baseline expectations that for a company that has a fairly high price earnings ratio relative to the market, 
you should already be scrutinizing where it's going to find those extra sources of growth. Now, NVIDIA in this case actually has performed quite well in the last couple of years, where it's really increased its earnings substantially and has actually brought its price earnings ratio down, right. um, even though the level is quite high, it used to be substantially higher. Um, so it may be an exception here where it is able to generate sufficient earnings growth to justify those high valuations. Yeah, It'll really depend on the demand for its product is. The truth is, it doesn't matter if you decide to buy NVIDIA shares before or after the split, and here's why. A stock split doesn't actually change the value of the company or the value of an investor's holding, meaning, if you buy one share today or 10 shares after the split, you'll be investing the same amount of cash. Also, stock splits themselves aren't catalysts for share performance since they're just mechanical movements, so we can't really expect NVIDIA shares to soar the day after the split because a split happened. Any potential gains, which could come either now or post-split, probably would be linked to the company's recent earnings performance or future growth prospects. If you want to bet on a current and future leader in the AI space, NVIDIA makes an excellent buy, whether that's now or after the split. The company's GPUs are powering the key AI tasks of training and inferencing, and demand for NVIDIA's chips and systems is so high, the company says it's racing to keep up. On the other hand, NVIDIA is set to release its Blackwell architecture and most powerful chip ever later this year, and the company pledges to update its top-performing chips annually. This will make it very difficult for rivals to unseat this market leader. Though we all tend to look at a stock price and immediately think, that's cheap or that's expensive, it's important to instead look at valuation or what the stock really is worth. Today, NVIDIA trades at 42 times forward earnings estimates, which looks reasonable considering the company's market position and growth prospects. But what do you think about NVIDIA stock? Is it a buy at the current price? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section and don't forget to tell us what your valuation for NVIDIA is. If you would like to know what companies like NVIDIA have been up to these past few days, go ahead and click on the next video on your screen. See you there.